I thought it'd be helpful to, to explain the reasons why we chose this theme. The first was, was hopefully a rather obvious one, uh, that today in our uh, Anglican church calendar is All Saints Day, the day after Halloween or All Hallows' Eve, uh, and we wanted today to be a celebration of light as an answer to some of the darkness uh, that the world um, enjoys or celebrates the night before. We wanted to show that Jesus is the light of the world uh, and in him there is the ultimate victory. Secondly, times are pretty dark, as I said, um, and I recall very well standing on this very spot um, the week before the last lockdown, uh, sharing some thoughts about what uh, COVID means for us as a church, uh, for us as individuals, and for us as a society. Without the Perspex screen, of course. Times have changed, and the world has turned. The virus has come, gone, and come again. Um, but the message of Jesus bringing light has not changed. And I wanted to say that very clearly this morning. Thirdly, we acknowledge there's darkness in our world um, as a result of this pandemic. But we wanted to be serious as a church and say that there are bad things and dark things happening in our own lives, uh, experienced by all of us, some more than others. And we didn't want to sugarcoat that and ignore that those things are going on in our lives. But rather, we wanted to seek some answers and ask some questions about what's happening, why is it happening, and how can I respond to that. So we hope you'll all find, uh, as we worship together this morning, that God is love, he is light, and that by the end of the service, we'll be closer to understanding what that means. So a few practical points. Um, we'll be worshipping together with some songs, with prayers, and as I say, a bit of quizzing. But we'd like to suggest that if you're in the building uh, and can't sing, you might still like to bang things, to clap, uh, and to show your worship to God, even through dance or actions, if it's appropriate. If you're at home, you can really go for it in worship. And we would love to see you singing, dancing, and doing the actions to the songs that we're going to be listening to. There's also a chance for some responsive prayer uh, towards the end of the service. And again, in my head, this really worked. Whether it works in practice, I don't know, but we're going to give it a try. Um, if you can have some paper and a pen, ideally a nice thick marker pen, um, that would be great. Because what we're trying to do is, as a church, send up over a thousand prayers in the space of five minutes. That's the idea. And I'll tell you my workings out later on. Um, if you're in the church, there is some paper and a COVID secure pen that's not been touched by any human hands. Uh, and so feel free to use those and we'll gather your prayers in later on. So enough about me talking. You're going to get very bored of that by the end of the service. Um, without further ado, we're going to move on to one of our favourite worship songs in Community Kids. Uh, and hopefully very relevant for us today. Uh, and that's Let Your Light Shine. We'll come back shortly. I look forward to seeing you then. Share those verses together to frame how we're going to move forward during the service. So um, we're going to listen and watch uh, these videos. After that, we're going to move straight into a, uh, another form of sung worship, and that will be uh, led by the Rowlands family. Uh, who've uh, done a video for us uh, for another song that we'll all try and keep up with the actions for. So we'll move to, to listen to some uh, verses from the Bible. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. 
The commandments of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. You, Lord, are my lamp. The Lord turns my darkness into light. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Can his forces be numbered? On whom does his light not rise? Light shines on the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. And God said, let there be light and there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Hi everyone, we are going to sing a song now that you all know because we do it loads at church and we've done it at BBS um, and we're going to start slow and we're going to speed up and do all of the actions so why don't you see if you can keep up with us. So, God really can do anything. Um, as we discussed earlier in the service, we're talking about light this morning. Uh, it's a simple concept, isn't it? And as we've heard from all of our church members, it's something that's talked about a lot in the Bible. But I want you to imagine for a moment that you're fast asleep in bed. So close your eyes if you're in here. You're fast asleep in bed. And those on Zoom as well, close your eyes. You wake up in the middle of the night and it's pitch black. You're feeling frightened as you can't see anything. You can open them again. <laughs> would we say that a lamp like this, this is an old fashioned one, would it be good news or bad news? What would we say? Congregation members, 
Is it good news or bad news? Good news. Excellent. You'd be able to see things again. Those monsters you might have perceived in the corner of your room, you'd be able to say, don't exist. Good news. Now imagine you're walking through the woods and suddenly it's become really dark. You're struggling to see the path ahead. Would this be good news? I'm holding up a torch. I think you can see that on Zoom. Yeah. Would this be good news, church? A torch to show our path, to lead the way so that we wouldn't get lost. It would be good news. You can see this is not the quiz element. There is a quiz further along that would be a little bit more challenging. Um, and finally, you're a captain of a ship. You're out at sea at night and you're coming into port. You're really worried about hitting the rocks. Would, if I can get this ready, would this be good news? Yeah. It's a lighthouse. Everyone is in a very, very uh, gentle way suggesting that they agree with me in the church. No one raise their voices. Don't panic. So in, in many different situations we find ourselves in, we know that light is good news because it makes, us, makes it possible for us to see. Jesus said something very interesting about himself. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness like we were in the woods, but will have the light of life. So Jesus being the light of the world is good news for each one of us. So during this briefest of talks, I'm hoping that we'll be able to see what it means for Jesus to lead us on a safe path through life, for Jesus to help us to see things as they really are, and that also Jesus promises that his light will never leave us. So when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life, I'm pretty sure that the people that were listening to him would have understood that he was claiming to be the God who kept his ancestors safe from the dangers in the wilderness. An example of God's light helping the Israelites in the, in the desert with the pillar of fire at nighttime so they could follow. And again, a little bit of imagination here. Imagine wandering around the wilderness in the dark. It would have been really dangerous. There would have been all sorts of physical dangers, wild animals, insects, creepy crawlies, um, and you wouldn't have known where you were going. So having a pillar of light to follow would have been really useful. But I don't think Jesus is necessarily saying that he's keeping us physically safe here from insects and animals. He came to lead us on that safe path through life. The path that will one day lead to us joining him in heaven. So the first thing we can say if we follow Jesus, the light of the world, is that he'll lead us on a safe path through life. A bit like that lighthouse we were talking about, and I'm hoping I can put this there. You can see that on Zoom, it's a lighthouse. Oh, blue tag, there we go. A lighthouse to lead us safely through life. And I'm so excited that later on, we will get a chance to listen or to sing about a lighthouse and it's one of my favorite songs i'm really looking forward to singing that with you all so jesus helps us stay on the safe path he also shows us things as they really are and earlier on we talked about having a lamp when things are dark uh, and that being really good news that we could see when we woke up in the middle of the night and we couldn't see what things were like and i guess at the moment we're dealing with a lot of uncertainty we can't see what things are. We can't think, see things the way that I think God would like us to see them. So we need God to shine a light into our dark times to show us how things really are. When a blind man met Jesus, many of us will know the story. I'm sure that we've talked about it in Community Kids. He came across a blind man. He made it possible for that blind man to see. Imagine what it must have been like for him to see the sun the sky for the first time, to see Jesus in person. 
It must have been like being in that dark room and suddenly putting on the lights. And so, my next illustration, which hopefully will uh, show us as we move along. That God is like a lamp shining into the darkness. Now, we're not physically blind like that man in the story. Um, but Jesus needs to show us and help us not to be spiritually blind. Until we meet him, until we have an encounter with him, we are spiritually in the darkness. But when he opens our spiritual eyes, we're able to see him as he really is. His goodness, his love, his holiness, and his beauty. And if we choose to follow Jesus, his promise to us is that we'll never walk in the darkness. We will see things as they really are. Now, before I talk about the third element that I wanted to share this morning about Jesus and God never leaving us, even in the dark times, it's time for the all-important all-age quiz. Whee! Barry's waving his arms. He didn't shout out. He gently gesticulated to me that he was excited, as I am about the fact that we're going to have a quiz together as a church family. Now, as we referenced earlier on, one of the ideas for today's service was an answer to the darkness of the events of Halloween. And in that vein, I'm afraid to say that we've gone rather Anglican. You might even say Roman Catholic. And we'll be basing today's quiz on some saints and looking at All Saints Day as a quiz. So I'm not sure how this is going to go. I really am not sure how this is going to go. But we're going to have a try. That's what the idea of all age services is. Some of the answers, hopefully, our younger members will be able to know. So do engage them and get them to listen in. And some, I'm sure the adults won't either. So keep your own scores if you can. And we'll move through uh, together. So Matt, can we cue? Yes the uh, all-age service quiz uh, for autumn 2020. And as I shared last week, uh, last year even, in our all-age service, my fourth favourite season. Okay, so our first saint, can you name her? And all saints, yeah, that's the other thing. I was thinking about all saints, the uh, 90s pop band as well. You can see that little image there in the corner. Yeah. We'd like to be on a beach right now. Okay, so who is this saint who founded the Missionaries of Charity and was canonized on the 4th of September 2016? Write down your answers. I'll tell you at the end. I thought it was an easy one to warm up. All right, next one. He was the first pope. And I can tell you that these um, little peg figures have been based on the actual characters. There's, uh, there's some photographs from back then, uh, and they've been uh, modelled on that. <laughs> okay, next one. Now, this is slightly tricky. He's a Roman soldier. He became a monk, and then the Bishop of Tours, or Tor. I'm not sure how to say that. We're all shrugging. Any ideas? Any ideas? <laughs> We're all saying, can we copy Siobhan in the, in the church? Right, next one. This is a good one. He saved three children from a butcher and inspired Santa Claus. And if you say that slowly, you might get the right answer. Okay, next one. He's the patron saint of Ireland. I won't do the accent. It would be uh, inappropriate, I'm sure. Great. And the next one. She was the mother of John the Baptist. Again, we're going into some elements of the Christmas story here, but uh, uh, we won't go too far because we've got another month to go despite the fact that in our family we've already had, was it three or four days of the Christmas soundtrack? 
<laughs> good. Next one. It's a good one. He fought a dragon and is the patron of England. Not all of these are historically accurate, as you can uh, possibly tell. And next one. She was martyred in the early 4th century in Egypt and is the patroness of unmarried girls. Who knew? I didn't know one existed. And the next one. He's the patron of lovers. Gosh, that's a bit racy for a Sunday morning. And then the last one. He was the husband of Mary. What a good man. There he is. Right, so if we scroll back to the start of the quiz, we'll give you the answers. There is absolutely zero reward for getting this right. <laughs> no chocolates, no nothing. It's just for fun. Okay, so who was it? It's difficult to get feedback from Zoom, isn't it, when they're on the screen? Um, what do we think? Teresa. Teresa was called out from the church, and that's correct. St. Mother Teresa. Next one. First Pope, any ideas? Peter. And again, historical, historically accurate representation there. Next one. Who knew this one? St. Martin of Tours. We should have copied Siobhan. We should have copied Siobhan. It's absolutely correct, Siobhan. Thank you. Next one. Inspired Santa Claus. Let's ask the children here. Sammy, do you know? St. Nicholas. Yes. And I always used to think you said Santa Claus quickly and you got the right answer. Next one. Patron saint of Ireland. Who do we think? Is anyone Irish in the Anthony would know this at home. Patrick, Siobhan had a hand up. Well done, Siobhan. Next one. She was the mother of John the Baptist. What do we think? Elizabeth. Well done, well done. Next one. So, oh, I gave it away. Uh, Fort Dragon, patron of England. Will's got his hand up. St. George, good man, well done. And uh, we all know yesterday was a good day for England. You know, won the, won the 2020, finally, Six Nations. Next one. Uh, so she was martyred in the 4th century in Egypt and is the patroness of unmarried girls. Does anyone know this one? <laughs> Ricardo said his mother-in-law. There we go. There we go. No comment. No comment. Does anyone know? People at home will know because they'll have Googled it. It was... St. Catherine of Alexandria. There we are. Next one. Patron of lovers. What do we think? St. Valentine. Absolutely correct. And the last one. Husband of Mary. Have we got any children that haven't been asked? Woody, do you know? St. Joseph. And I didn't see mummy whispering that in your ear. Good job. <laughs> Brilliant. So just a little bit of fun to, to lighten the mood of the day. And again, remember that those saints, gosh, they were living through dark times too. Um, and they loved Jesus and they knew that he was the light of the world uh, and they were able to demonstrate that. So We'll be moving now to change gear a little bit into a time of, of prayer. Um, and those prayers are going to be delivered in two formats. One will be uh, a video that John and Jay Martin have prepared during the week. And then Ellie and Fiona Seeger will come and uh, share some prayers on behalf of our church. On this special Sunday... We come together to thank you for the true light that is in Jesus. He is the light of this world, and in him there is no darkness at all. We thank you, Lord, for our church. Thank you for the love which unites us and for our leaders. 
We pray that we may be a light in our town and that those who may feel lost and confused in this time may come and feel the welcome of our church family. We ask you, Jesus, to keep us safe from the many things that scare us, some that are real and some that are not. Help us by your spirit to know that you are real and that you are looking after us. Thank you for your word. We pray that the Bible will daily be our guide in each of our homes. We ask that our nation would listen to your word and would repent and come back to you. We pray for our children and young people, especially that you will help them as they go back to school after half term. If anyone was scared by Halloween, we pray that you will banish their fears. We pray for all our mums and dads. Protect them when they go out for shopping or to work. We pray that you would keep them healthy and strong. We pray that our families and homes will be places of true joy and learning together how to be true disciples. We pray for grandparents and other elderly people and those who care for them. When they feel lonely, please remind them that we love them and that you are with them all the time. We'd also like to offer a special prayer for anyone in our church who's carrying extra heavy burdens or lots and lots of burdens this week. Thank you, Jesus, that you promised you would share these burdens with us so that we could enjoy your rest. Help us all to remember you and relax today. Give us your peace. Amen. We also pray for our church, for Essex and for our nation as we enter a further difficult and testing time due to COVID-19 with this second lockdown. We pray for all carers and those providing medical care and for our schools, businesses and for those who will struggle with further isolation measures. Lord, we pray that you will take those who are vulnerable, both mentally and physically, into your care. We also pray for our government to give them wisdom for the decisions they make at such a crucial time, and for politicians in other nations, as we all struggle to contain COVID-19 and to move forward to regain a sense of normality. Finally, Lord, we pray for families throughout the world at a time where so many people are being separated. We pray that they may, may feel your love throughout this and be strengthened by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for those prayers. Um, ever more important that we lean on prayer during a time as this. Um, so in response today, um, as we've prayed together, I think I had an idea that, that, and that's why I've asked you to gather the A4 pieces of paper and some pens. So if you want to get those ready while I talk about what I'd like to do, so I had an idea that if there were 40 people on Zoom and each of them wrote down one or two words for things that they would like prayer for and held it up to their screens, that everyone else 
could scroll through and say a few words as they do that. And again, the calculations would work out that if 40 people said 40 prayers, we would end up with 1,600, 1,600 prayers in a short space of time. And I thought that because we value prayer so highly as, as a church, we could really get a high volume of prayers said. And I suppose as we move towards this lockdown together and as we move on to Zoom again, um, praying in this way, I thought, would connect each of us. So it may not work. It may be we only reach 1,500. But in the church, I'd also like for you to write down your prayer requests. Um, just one or two words uh, during a time of reflection. And then I will be able to offer those out to everyone on Zoom when we're ready. And hopefully, if you're in the church, what we'll do, yes, is we will see. So in the church, if I could describe it for those on Zoom, we've got the matrix of everyone. So we can see you all at home. Give us a wave. Give us a wave. And that also confirms you can hear me, which is brilliant. Um, uh, if you can find a way of getting your one or two words written down and on video, that will help us all uh, for a few moments of silence as we reflect together and then I'll share the prayers of those in church. So we'll have a two or three minute period of time to write your requests, scroll through and just send a few words up to the big guy. Let's go. So I can see Anthony is saying, please pray for schools, pupils and staff during lockdown too. Roger's asking us to pray for Amelie. Who's that? Is that one of the brands going back to school? Team brand? Yes, definitely. Teachers, Andrew, thank you. Key workers, vulnerable people. Arnie Addy, yes, we'll pray for that, Fran and Phil. I can't see yours, Phil. Push it a bit closer. Your mum's health, will do, Phil. Yes, mental health, that's a good thing to pray for. Yes, yeah, so a thank you for autumn colours, Hilary, thank you. Yes, we pray for those who are alone at the moment, Jenny, thank you. Who's, the, who's that bottom corner? I can't see yours. Who is it? Is that Eve? I can't see it. You need to go, need to go bubble writing. Maybe bubble writing. <laughs> I'm sure everyone at home can. It's probably just the, uh, the uh, resolution on these screens. Right, I'll be quiet now. Everyone's got the idea of it. And uh, let's pray for those things on our screen. Zoom. We've had a really good look at those prayers. Brilliant. I reckon we've easily breached a thousand, but if we can just raise it up a bit more, if those in the church could hold up their prayer requests, I'll speak out a few of them. I won't be able to share all of them, but if we just look around, don't move from your seats, but if you just look around and see what we can see. So I'm seeing someone called Erica. Mental health encouragement, I think very important. 
Uh, Alice, you've written loads. Excellent. <laughs> Peace, health, truth and clarity, community, unity, courage and love, safety, young people. Yes, family and Addy. I think that's really good. People who are isolated at home. The government as they make decisions. Paul, what's yours say? I can't see. Healing and health, yes, absolutely. Peace, I can see Judy right at the back, but I don't know what else it says. Peace in the world, absolutely. Brilliant, so thank you for helping me out with that. I hope that was helpful for us all to see those of you on Zoom and for us to interact with you in this building, I hope um, was really useful. So, We've got a little bit left to go. We're going to listen to a song uh, that I absolutely love, and it's going to be really hard for me not to sing along to in the church, um, but I'll do my best, um, about God being a lighthouse uh, for us. Uh, and so um, as we leave those on Zoom to go and uh, watch this worship song, we hope you enjoy it as much as we will in the building, and we'll see you very shortly. As well. Um, special thanks to Matt at the back. Um, as I arrived this morning, there was no internet in the building. Uh, and so whilst I'm, I'm sure there have been one or two technical difficulties, he is uh, the, the lighthouse for the, for the day, for the service. Thank you. Yeah, give me that. So just as we come into land for, from this morning's service, um, we, we've heard this morning that, that Jesus, the light of the world, will lead us on a safe path through life using our lighthouse, that he helps us to see things as they really are. And we've got the image of the lamp here to help us with that. And finally, I guess I wanted to, to challenge us all to remember that Jesus, the light of the world, promises us his presence and that he'll never, ever leave us. So, my last image is that of a candle. He doesn't say that I'll be with you until there's a global pandemic. He doesn't say I'll be with you until a family member or a loved one or even ourselves become unwell. And he doesn't say, I'll be with you until you lose your job or until you start to have financial difficulties. He says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And when the Israelites were in the wilderness, God never left them. He was with them with a pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire. When Jesus was born, his very name, Emmanuel, which means God with us, was a truth that we always talk about at Christmas. We sing about it. So if we choose to follow Jesus, he's promised never to leave us. And I'll say it again. He said, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So we may not be able to see Jesus physically the light of the world with our physical eyes, especially at the moment, but he is with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. He is God, he is powerful, and he is good. So God bless us this week. Let us remember the fact that he's going with us as we leave the building, as we press leave meeting on our Zoom devices. He goes with us. He doesn't leave us. And his light will not leave us. So I'm just going to pray and then we'll close. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to meet together as church. And um, thank you that you are with us. Thank you that you are here, that you're in this building, that you're in the homes of those people who are watching on Zoom. Uh, and Lord, I pray as we 
enter this next phase as a church together, that we do so remembering that your light shines in the darkness and that it has overcome it.